Well, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Today, we're going to talk about Modern Horizons 3, the next big Magic the Gathering set to come out. I'm really excited about this set. We're going to chat about it a little bit. Now, I don't want to try to sell you anything. That's not the goal here. I want to give you guys my honest thoughts as a store owner who went harder on Modern Horizons 3 than I have been going on past Magic the Gathering sets. I have been very skittish over the last two years for Magic the Gathering. I haven't been over-ordering. I haven't been, I've been trying to, to be on the light side, but for Modern Horizons 3, I actually over-ordered pretty significantly intentionally. I'm gonna tell you guys why I like this set, what I'm excited about. Um, but you know, if pre-ordering makes sense for you at the website, do it, gamegrove.gg. But I'm not here to pre-sell you any Anything. I actually am here to tell you at the end of the video, I'm going to restate this. I think Modern Horizons 3 is one of those sets where you should be very slow to purchase and you should be very slow to sell. You should be calculated in the way you're doing things and we'll get into that a little bit towards the back. But what I've seen a lot of the community talking about with Modern Horizons 3 is comparing it to Commander Masters. I actually think this is a bad idea. I don't think there's that much similarities to the two. I think where that comes from in the Magic the Gathering community is we are all so focused on price points. And I'm guilty of that too, of looking at this set because of the price point lining up in a lot of ways with Commander Masters uh, and looking at the way that Commander Masters went it makes sense. Uh, but I want to talk about the big differences that I see and why I wasn't skittish on Modern Horizons 3 as a result. Uh, the pricing fatigue was far superior in Commander Master's release schedule than it is in Modern Horizons 3. I want to talk about that a little bit. Commander Master's followed Lord of the Rings, okay? It was the set after the highest selling Magic the Gathering set of all time. Okay, Commander Masters came out with a high price tag, the set after the highest selling Magic the Gathering set of all time. It was right after it too. It wasn't even like four months after or anything. It was pretty much right after a couple months, you know, I think six weeks after or something like that. And it also launched right before Wilds of Eldraine, which was a pretty decent standard set. It wasn't like a home run standard set, but a lot of the reprint equity that they put into Commander Masters was also in Wilds of Eldraine. And while you as a consumer were purchasing or not purchasing Commander Masters, they were spoiling Wilds of Eldraine having the same cards that Commander Masters had at significantly cheaper price entry points for the product. So um, that release cadence was wild for Commander Masters. It was also kind of like a set that we didn't really know was happening. Uh, we didn't have this huge, you know, warm up to it. Whereas Modern Horizons 3, we've known it's been on the horizon <laughs> um, and, and we knew that it was going on. So Modern Horizons 3 in a release cadence separate is different because Modern Horizons 3, get this, is Lord of the Rings. It is the same release window as Lord of the Rings. That is the set that I think we should be looking at to compare, you know, whatever. But I think because of the price point, we all look towards Commander Masters. Um, from April to June, we have three months of no new product other than Modern Horizons 3. Uh, July, we have Assassin's Creed, and then Bloomborough, we have um, in August, Assassin's Creed, kind of like a smaller set, like Fallout. I don't think it's going to have as much of like a, a spend in the community, the, as much of the money sink. So for a huge window of time, Modern Horizons 3 is going to be what's for dinner on the plate. That's what you're, you're going to show up, and that's going to be the set that people are talking about for a long time. And I think that is a really, really important intricacy and, and little thing on this market that often gets overlooked when we just look at price point or reprint equity or the amount of serialized cards. One of the big things on the market is where do these releases come out? What's before it, what's after, and how much time is between those things? And in my humble opinion, Modern Horizons 3 is primed to be a, a release that's going to take attention away from everything else for a long time, a lot like Lord of the Rings did. So uh, I think Modern Horizons 3, again, is the main set for a long time, and that's gonna go a long way for the set. Now, there's some stuff that I think uh, we need to talk about. First and foremost, the price point is really expensive. It is an expensive set that always adds risk 
to the community. Uh, but that being said, it's also an expensive set. This is a, a, a not just it's not a negative towards this. It, it's not taking away that it's an expensive set. It's also a set that's going to take time to see what the value is. Whenever you get a new set with printing things direct into modern, into these higher formats, um, obviously to, com to Commander 2, uh, but it takes time for us as a community to identify the cards that are actually good, that we'll see play in these legacy formats. It takes the community some time. And this is where I want you to really, really focus on the point of this video, is to not rush your card sales. There's a lot of you guys I know, you're in my Discord server, you're buying boxes as gold wizards, or as, you know, whatever, you're buying boxes and you're ripping for singles. Man, this is one of those sets where there's gonna be a race to the bottom because things like play boosters are not allocated. There's gonna be a lot of product out there people are going to be ripping a lot of product you're going to start seeing some of those singles prices go down and then all of a sudden it's going to be a, a straight line up once the community figures out and identifies those cards that are actually powerful actually strong and that kind of thing those new cards are going to take a long time uh, to get and it's a little bit different than a standard set too because it it's not just commander and standard that's kind of pushing the the narrative these cards are powerful and are printed for commander standard modern and into these legacy formats which is huge the second thing that i think is really important is that supply is going to be supply is pretty weird on a set like this we we've got we haven't seen lord of the rings again is the best example we haven't seen a set like this in in a while for a big release and so it's kind of hard to judge how much supply is going to be out there. We know from a distribution perspective that play booster boxes are going to be pretty readily available. We felt that way for Commander Masters Draft too, but now all of a sudden you can't get Commander Masters Draft boxes. Maybe they'll put more out later, uh, but you can't get those. Uh, it's a weird world where these play boosters are changing up. Set boxes did really poorly for Commander Masters. Draft boxes did pretty dang well for Commander Masters. And this is a play booster. The first time we've seen a play booster printed into a higher end set. That's super interesting. But they're also, they've got the full supply available. And then you have collector boxes, which we're being told are going to be heavily allocated. Also have serialized cards with this kind of notion that like, can they reprint them? Or, or I guess they can't reprint them, but will they supply them differently? Uh, we got a slow restock of Lord of the Rings, but it never really happened in a major way. So it kind of tells me that collector boxes are going to be a, a pretty quick moving product in this industry right now, the way that it stands. That's why I went pretty heavy on collector boxes, but I backed away from the play boosters uh, because it's, it doesn't seem like there's anything preventing the play boosters from just being an everybody gets exactly what they asked for type of thing. Uh, so that supply creates this kind of weird dichotomy in this setup uh, where mixed with people opening singles and, uh, and the, the prices of singles taking so long to catch up, the, the long lasting advice I think for this set is don't rush, don't jump the gun, don't go and order cards at pre-release prices, wait for things to start eroding down in value evaluate you know where you think the market is in terms of how many people are opening up packs and that kind of thing you can't time it um but man don't get i'm telling you this is going to be a story that we see in this in this release cadence you're going to see stores fighting to the absolute bottom on singles prices it's going to be it's going to be like lord of the rings uh the the second the the, the wave two set uh the the special collector edition I was guilty of this. I was part of that. Everybody was fighting to the absolute bottom because just the way that it worked. That's going to happen for a while, but oh man, things are going to dry up and you're, you're going to see people get to know the cards and it's going to it's going to change it. So that's my opinion. Let me know what your opinion is on the set in the comment section. I know what it's going to be. Your opinion is going to be it's too expensive, blah, blah, blah. Listen, things are expensive now. This is the way that it is. Uh, and, and some other games are moving away from that. You've got your Lorcana and uh, you've got your, your Star Wars that are moving away with that. Magic is leaning into the expensive and it's not not working is the problem. We still buy it, everybody, all of us, stores, consumers, everybody's still buying it. It doesn't matter that a Lord of the Rings collector pack is $40, people are still buying them. 
So it's, it is what it is. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Remember to be kind to the people around you. If you do want to pre-order Modern Horizons 3, head on over to GameGrove.gg. Search it up there uh, if you want to support the channel and the store. Uh, I appreciate you all. Be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.